chapter in the Bible. It's filled with revelation. <clears throat> it tells us who we can be in Christ Jesus. Listen to what I want to say. It's one thing to pray a prayer. Lord forgives you, saves you, you're born again. But it's another thing to be changed from glory to glory into His likeness and image. And begin to live and demonstrate and experience what Christianity is designed to be, to be. In Romans 8, verse 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, called according to His purposes. Verse 31, if God be for us, who could be against us? How many refrigerators carry that scripture? <laughs> verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of God? He gives this whole list of trials and tribulations and distress and persecutions. Verse 37, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And then the chapter closes, I'm persuaded, neither death nor life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things past, nor nor height or depth, nor any other created thing, and listen to these words, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But what's interesting to me is the first two verses of this chapter. If you don't get the first two verses, all of those wonderful things I just read that are possible for you will evade you. And so I want to minister this morning on conquering condemnation. Because in Romans 8, verse 1 and 2, Paul addresses this before he goes through all of the other dynamics and the possibilities and the love of Christ. More than conquerors. Greater is he, all of these things. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. God, we come this morning by the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that You minister truth. I pray You save the lost. Those that are living in sin, backsliders, God, You would bring them home. Declare Your name in this place. Bless these people, God. I pray, change them. Give them revelation on how to live life. Give them understanding on how to conquer and be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Conquering condemnation. So let's expose condemnation this morning. Condemnation is the act of condemning. It's to declare sentence. It's to damn someone to pass judgment. You are guilty. Condemned. No hope for you. Finished. It's over. The devil, you must understand, he is a condemner. His first name is not thief. Uh, Although he is one. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. And we understand that. But his first name is Satan. And that word translated, Satan, means the prosecutor, the condemner. Revelation 12, 9. So the great dragon who was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived. Satan 
The accuser of our brethren. Revelations 12, 10, for the accuser of our brethren who accused before our God day and night has been cast down. So if you're going to be a participant of all of these great promises at the end of Romans 8, we'll talk a little bit more about that, you need to understand there is a condemner, a prosecutor, relentless, day and night. He accuses you. He condemns you. And you're going to have to conquer that. He'll speak to you. He'll whisper to you. He'll put things in your head and in your mind. He'll use other people. And this condemner, he'll bring these waves of guilt and shame. Look at you. Horrible person. You're no good. You're worthless. You will never amount to anything. You can never change. That's the condemner. What a miserable mess you've made of your life. We see this in the book of Job. The devil, Satan, he is the accuser. His strategy is one of condemnation. Job 1.8, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. Blameless, an upright man, one who fears God, and shuns evil. Listen, you will never be good enough to outrun condemnation. You will never do enough good to outrun it. Condemnation causes you to live in regret. Condemnation will hold you hostage to your past. Listen to Satan. Respond to what God said about Job. Job 1.9 Satan answered the Lord and said, Does not Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and all that he has? You've blessed him. You've protected him. All of these things. And then he said, But if you allow me to touch him, he'll curse you to your face. Now here he is condemning this man that God testified about he was an upright man. He was a good man. Remove that, he says, and he will curse you to your face. When you live in condemnation, there's a tendency to lash out at people. Your attitude becomes your defense. If hell can get you to buy in to condemnation, you'll automatically begin to develop an attitude. <coughs> Condemnation <coughs> never sees anything good. There's never any hope. There's never any future. There's never any encouragement. You might as well quit. Give up. What's the use of even believing? Listen to Job's wife. She bought into condemnation, and you can feel her attitude. She bought this lie. Job 2.9. His wife said to Job, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. That's the voice of condemnation. Have you ever heard that voice? That's the whisper in your ear. <coughs> Go in the towel. Condemnation not only strangles any faith, any hope for the future, but it will tie you to your past. Condemnation is a card that's played many times out of your memory. God said, when you got saved, I cast your past into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more. But that's not what the devil says. He will come and he will whisper in your ear and he will try to resurrect memories. Condemning memories. Memories perhaps you were and are ashamed of. The voice of your memory in condemnation keeps reminding you what you did back there. 
And if you buy into that, that's why Paul says you're going to have to conquer this. If you buy into that, you'll be tied there. You'll be tied to your past. Condemnation was played out in the garden. Adam and Eve sinned. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But condemnation begins to draw you into grief of your past. But it's not just that. It's helplessness and hopelessness. And how did Adam and Eve deal with this? They're hiding from God. Are you hiding from God this morning because a whisper from your past or hell has convinced you? Adam and Eve, here they are, they've sinned. And the Bible says in Genesis 3, 9 and 10, the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? In other words, God's looking for them. He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. I wonder how many here this morning you're hiding from God and what God has for you, God's purposes for you, God's future, God's destiny, but because of condemnation, you want to avoid God. You want to hide from God. I hid myself. Devil's dealt you this card, and so you're misinterpreting God's intentions. God's calling your name. Adam, Adam, where are you? I have a living sacrifice. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. I have a living sacrifice. <coughs> Waiting for you. And you're hiding. I wonder how many people even come to church and yet God's crying out. I got I, I gave my son the Lamb of God, shed his blood that you could be forgiven of, that the curse could be broken, that your whole world could be transformed. And yet you hide. Mentally you hide. Hide behind activities and excuses. Lies. Condemnation. God's out to get me. Destroy me. He doesn't like me. Condemnation offers no answers, no solution, and no hope. It's the enemy that will beat you down and just keep stomping on you. And he does it out of memory, and he tries to drag up what God says I've edited. Conviction is different than condemnation. Conviction comes by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 2, in our text, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Conviction has specifics. Condemnation, normally it's general. You're a horrible person. There's no detail. Maybe a little chapter or Kodak moment will flash from your path. But conviction, I've been convicted before. You need to quit watching that. You need to quit that thing. You need to quit doing that. Remember, I got saved when I poured out the alcohol. Got rid of the roach clips. Eventually sold my bike. Did everything God dealt with me. I need you need to quit going there. I never went to the clubs again. You need to get away from that person. I remember when I told my biker friends, I'm not gonna ride with you anymore. I'm selling my bike. That was conviction. But the difference in conviction, you need to do this. You need to pray more. You need to forgive. It's a conviction brings a confession. And when you're confessing, God is editing your past. Jesus on the cross said it's finished. 
It's finished. First John 1 9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I remember I went to church a few times with my wife. She got saved about six months. And I looked at those people. I said, I can never do this. I mean, I felt so weird in there. So, I mean, I'm looking. Maybe that's you this morning. There's hope. And I remember looking out. I'm seeing people lift their hands. They're speaking in tongues. They're singing. Uh, and I'm looking at it. Shush. I can never do that. Now, going to a club, I felt absolutely shy to do this. <laughs> But what I didn't understand when I got convicted, God was dealing with me. And that conviction brought a confession. I went down to the altar. God, I'm sorry. I don't know how to fix it. I know I'm, nobody had to tell me I was messed up. I was 29 years old. I knew I was messed up. I didn't know how to fix it. But what I didn't understand was when I began to confess, God began to edit. And the Bible says He gave me a new heart. The difference in confession and conviction, it's about the future. It's about hope in Christ. I'll never forget, I saw this guy, I hated him. And I won't give you all the history, but I just, when I saw him in the past, if he was in a place, I'd walk out. And I saw him, and I didn't feel that. I, I wanted to go over and tell him about Jesus. Yes. And I remember I'm thinking in my mind, what has happened to you? This is too weird. <laughs> and I remember going over, and I shook his hand, called him by the hand, and began to tell him how I got saved and born again. <laughs> See, the, there's a difference. Conviction is by the Holy Spirit. It's your friend. It's the voice of God's Spirit. It'll keep you from sin and destruction. It'll warn you. It'll guide you. It'll lead you. In our text, he says, walk in the Spirit according to the Spirit. And it doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means I, I, I want to go somewhere with God. Walk in the Spirit. I, I'm, I'm taking a... Maybe it's a baby step, but at least it's a step in the right direction. I want to go somewhere. The Spirit of God, I'm listening and He's convicting. He's guiding. He's speaking to me. Taking me somewhere. You see me now. I may not impress you. But just wait. Wait and see what God will do. I'm going somewhere. I'm walking. And it's conviction that's leading me. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we are with unveiled face beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. In other words, when you conviction is that which nudges you to listen to the Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to surrender to the Spirit. I want to obey God, your Spirit. And when I do that, <coughs> there's a change from glory to glory. Yeah. Or it may not impress you. But you just meet somebody after you've been saved about a year that you haven't seen. I go back to the Midwest sometimes. Most of the people that I used to party with, they're all dead. <laughs> Smoking and drinking and partying is hard on you. If you don't believe me, just ask me. I can give you names and dates. And some of them tragic deaths. Motorcycles, shot in the head, various things. And, but but they I remember they'd see me. I'd say, man, shoot. Joe, you look good. And I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, you don't look so good. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> Heard me tell about. <laughs> I can tell these stories. I went to a funeral. And this girl was, this tells you how, when I was, she was a fox. I mean, she didn't wear me, but she, I mean, this, this girl. And I'm in a funeral home. I'm, I'm doing the funeral. And she comes running for me. And she's pulling this tank. 
It's an oxygen tank. She got <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and if you're in that shoes, God bless you. I'm not, it's not the point. <laughs> but I mean, we, we kind of step out, you know, kind of in the outside of the mortuary, kind of people are all over the place, and she pulled this tank. And she pulls a cigarette out and lights it up and talking oxygen. And I looked at her and I said, Oh, thank you. Thank you, God, for coming. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you are so good to me. And her visitor Connie's my wife. She's sitting right here. <laughs> Dealing with me. Transform. Listen, conviction by the Spirit leads you to a place called freedom. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's not automatic. Listen, you can't allow other people to control your freedom. You know those people always want to bring up your past. Or they want to lead you back into your past. Pull you. The old ways. The old sins. You have to decide. And that's conviction. That's having convictions. God's convictions become your convictions. And that's freedom. Romans 8, 2, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from sin and death. John 8, 36, therefore the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Walk in the Spirit. Is that where you walk? It's a place of conviction. Conviction is your friend, your guide. Galatians 5.16, I say then walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 5.18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Condemnation labels you by your past. Condemnation identifies you out of one of your chapters of your past. Horrible chapter, sin chapter. Chapter of mistakes and stupid decisions and locks you in. Maybe a chapter of years ago. But see, conviction? Conviction says, I want to show you forth. It says to unveil. Unveil things you didn't see. That's the Spirit of God when you live in conviction. I'm talking about unveiling possibilities. Your family didn't see it. Your husband, your wife didn't see it. Your parents, your children. Uh, Moses on the Old Testament, he's on the mountain with God. And he hears and sees revelation. And he comes down to the people. He's glowing. He's been changed. The second Corinthians 3.14 But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted because the veil is taken away in Christ. Verse Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil, that blindness to who I really am, is taken away. Why did they do that? Why am I like this? What makes me go crazy? Run away. Go ballistic. What causes me trapped in the same? The veil is lifted in conviction by the Spirit. Why do I react like that? The Holy Spirit says, this is why. Conviction causes you to see yourself. It says you can deal with it. I'll help you deal with it. I had a horrible anger problem. God help me. I had attitudes and mindsets. You've heard me preaching. The Holy Spirit exposes not just the problem, though, but the possibilities. 
That's the wonderful thing about conviction. You can be blessed. Conviction will reveal God's plans and purposes for you. You're here. You can have your own business. There are people come through the door, couldn't scratch two dimes together. <laughs> and today have their own business. You can be happy. People come through the doors and start, and they can't remember. They can't even spell happy. <laughs> and today they're married. Young man come to me this morning. I remember when he came through the door. I remember his testimony. Smoking dope in what, nine years old? God, sitting right here. I remember when he got baptized telling the story. You know, and and all and and he come to me and Pastor, Pastor, he said, Come on, I forgot I want to do something. I'll be out of here in a year. I want to preach. I went up to him when he got baptized a few years ago. Come out of the south side of the street. <coughs> One day you're going to come screaming at me, you want to preach. He looked at me. God saw that. God saw that. What does God see in you? That's ministry. You can see things in people they can't see for themselves. There are people who love you. Maybe nobody. Your mother had a hard time loving you. That's bad. <laughs> but when you get saved, God says, listen, there's people. You're not alone. Everybody's not out to rip you off. It never entered my mind ever that I could ever, ever remember that I could preach or be a pastor of a nation. Never, never. All my sin and even LSD. <laughs> and, and, and and drugs and I I never I mean I had you know you had when you you ever did LA you have these God experiences you sit out there engaged in the heavens and get crazy <laughs> look at a weed for three hours and spiritualize you know the leaf on the a leaf a stone the door and the all of the God of places where it preached seven thousand years ago begin to love and then yesterday in Texas that's hippie talk crazy talk. I remember God, man. God. Son, if you'd be faithful, I'll cause you to preach in the nations. I never knew Malaysia existed. I did not. I never heard of Malaysia. Maybe you did, but I never had. Singapore, but I never heard of Malaysia. We planted churches and places. Listen, that's part of God. That's where conviction, when I got saved and began to walk after God, say, God, I want to please you. And that's true all over this building. There's a team going to China here shortly. A bunch of people here going to China, going over there in the streets, be at church, Paul and Deanna Alvarez. Who ever imagined? You could be a good dad. You can be a good husband, a good wife, a good mother, teenager. Teenager, when you walk in conviction, you don't have to be like all the other. You don't have to enter that school and all the pressure. You can stand for God. Conviction says, believe this, pursue this. These promises are yours. Listen, your past is not your future. Condemnation says your past, and that's all you'll ever be. Conviction says, no, 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 no. God, God has a future for you, and it looks nothing, nothing at all like your past. Romans 8 26, and I'm, I'm a poet. Likewise, the Spirit, this is grade 8, this chapter, you ought to read it every week. The Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Helps us in our weaknesses. Makes intercession for us. And then the conclusion of this chapter 
All of this becomes your possibilities. Look at when conviction is lived. Look what it brings. Look what it delivers. Romans 8, 28, you know that all things work together for good. The pain, the agony, good times, bad times, struggles, hard. All things work together for good to those who love God. That's you. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves. All of this begins to flood into your life because you've conquered condemnation. And you begin to walk in the Spirit. Conviction brings you to the love of Christ. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. John 3.17 and I close. We all know John 3.16. God so loved the world that gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever would believe in Him would not perish and have ever What about John 3, 17? For God did not, did not, did not send His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to condemn the world. Did not. But He sent Him that the world through Him might be saved. Jesus, if it's condemnation, it's of the devil. Jesus did not come to condemn you. The Bible says He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What about you? Where are you living? What's your address spiritually? Where are you living? Where are you living? Are you living? Oh, to walk in the Spirit. Your house may not impress anybody. I've lived in places over the years. <laughs> Driven cars and you prayed. You prayed a lot when you drove those cars. <laughs> you laid hands on them. <laughs> I may remember, you know I'm talking about. Maybe you there. I mean you rebuke things out of that car. <laughs> But 